So, thanks for coming out on a gorgeous Saturday morning, because you could be out at the Soup Box Derby, or out going for a walk or hike, and so thank you for being here at the Langley Library. They obviously present a lot of wonderful programs, and I've just felt very honored lately to be able to be lecturing at, within the Snow Isle system, at Stanwood Library the other night, and this morning, and the audience are always um, just thirsting for knowledge and information, and so it's just a delightful audience to already be in that space. And so today, I'm really excited to be here. This is the first time this presentation has ever been given. I want to always make sure and acknowledge source. So first, there's always, of course, the greatest source of which information comes through me and my brain and from the universe, but also to authors and other people that have contributed to the body of work. So I want to, from right, the, right from the very beginning, just make note that there are several books here and authors from which information has been drawn. Hi, welcome. Come on in. We're just starting. Um, most significantly in this lecture, I'm going to be drawing from the work of Charles Duhigg in The Power of Habit, um, from Dr. Joe Dispenza, who's written several books, including Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, several other authors and researchers as well. But these are excellent resources for you to take <coughs> the information that I go through today and take it even deeper. So what I wanted to begin with, obviously, as you said, my name is Dr. Craig Wiener. I'm a chiropractor, but I really have a passion for mind-body medicine or really practices that transform our lives, right? So everybody's already leading a rich life in their own unique way, and there are often ways that we want to make it even broader and have even more depth and breadth and richness and texture and excitement and learning and knowledge and all of those things. So it's not that any of us are leading a life that's less. We just often want to see how we can expand it. The topic of today is understanding <coughs> habit enough to change it. It's just a, a good tagline to say that we all have habits, right? They're neither good nor bad. They're just ones we choose to have in our life or ones that we choose to not want to have in our life. And it's really a matter of putting our focus and attention on which ones we want to keep and which ones we don't, or which ones we wish, wish to release and which ones we need to add. So I really want us to get out of the good habit, bad habit mentality. Can we, like, right now just say, okay, I'm just going to let go of good habit, bad habit? Right now. Yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> they're just ones I, they're ones that I wish to choose or ones I wish to let go of, right? That's all. Because at any one time, a habit you might call good, but then later you call it bad, and so that changes depending on your perception and time of life, etc. Staying up late every night might be a really good habit when you're 18 years old and going to college, but you know later on may not be such a good habit, so it changes. So um, let's talk a little bit about habit. Definition of habit is a regular tendency or practice that's hard to give up one definition. Another one might be an automatic reaction to a specific situation. In other words, something happens and without even thinking you respond in a certain way. Okay? My favorite one is a behavior pattern acquired by frequent repetition or physiological exposure that shows itself in regularity or increased facility or performance. So in other words, if you're an athlete, you want to repeat things over and over and gain it so well, that ability, that it becomes automatic. Right? So habit is really just that repetitive pattern of which we start to do things without thinking. Now, in preparing for this lecture, I started looking at my day in my life, like what's a habit and what's not. And it's not always very clear. So I started to look at, okay, when I begin in the morning, I go to the bathroom. That's a habit. Is that an okay habit? Yes, it's a physiological habit that I choose to continue. And then I wash my face and I brush my teeth. And, and that's a habit that I do pretty much every morning, mostly, and, and that's okay, too. So I started to look at, were those conscious or unconscious? Well, they were fairly conscious, but there was an unconscious aspect to them as well. I may not have thought, okay, all right, got to go to the bathroom first, and i got to brush my... I'm not necessarily consciously planning out that first 10-minute routine. So there's definitely unconsciousness and patterning that starts to become automatic when done repetitively over time. So I tried to then take it deeper. What are those things that I do that I'm not even aware that I'm doing? I figured, okay, that's going to get me a little bit closer to habit. 
And so I start to look at, um, during the day, things as I'm writing and working on this lecture. And I'm noticing as I'm thinking and I'm chewing on my pen that I don't even know I'm chewing on my pen. Except that I notice that a lot of my pen tops have little bite marks on them. So I go, okay, that's starting to resemble more what I want to look at as habit. Because it's become so automatic, I don't even know I'm doing it anymore. And that's where we start to lose that awareness. We start to lose our consciousness of, and we lose power over choosing when it becomes so automatic and repetitive that we don't even know we're doing it anymore. So I'd like to invite you to not just be a uh, observer in today's lecture, but to start participating from the very beginning. So let's just start off in a group, and let's just start to kind of popcorn out what are some of the habits, good, bad, etc., that if you think about, have some automaticity to them that when you think about it, you may be doing without even being aware of. Can anybody give me one? Do I need to give you ideas of one first? <laughs> yes, God. Biting my fingernails. Biting your fingernails. Excellent. <laughs> so let's actually break it down a little bit. I'll make it even easier. Let's talk about habits that are physical, habits maybe that are psychological or mental, and ones that are emotional. Oh, that's starting to help already, yes. <laughs> Yeah, the thinking, the, you know, just the... The monkey chatter yeah, thinking yeah, stuff. Thinking. Da, 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 You know what the average attention span is? <laughs> eight, eight seconds. Mm -hmm. Ten years ago, it was 12 seconds. Mm -hmm. You know what's scary? Is the average attention span of a goldfish is nine seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so, number one, just know that due to our lifestyle and due to many things that it has been reduced, that our attention span is short, and it is the general nature of mind to go do it, to do it, which reminds me of this, which makes me think of that, which makes me think of this, of that, etc. And we start to think of that as just, well, that's the way I am. That's the way my brain is. And we start to forget that it can be exercised or trained just like any other muscle. We'll talk a lot more about that. <coughs> So let's get back to physical habits. All right, biting fingernails, chewing on pens, twirling hair, rubbing face, chin, crossing legs. Everybody that's crossed their legs, did you choose to do that on purpose or did you just automatically do that without even thinking? Stroking their beard. Stroking their beard, sure. But let's make it personal and not other. <laughs> okay. I want to get you involved. How about looking to other people before I examine my? No, I'm so let's go ahead. I might have shaved before I came. Thank you. you very well, have, and that would be an assumption on my part. Assume it was somebody else. Anybody else? Physical habits. How about anything to do with food? Hmm? I'm sorry. Foot jiggling. Foot jiggling. Yeah, foot shaking. Okay. Anything with food? Eating your favorite last. Eating, eating. The best thing last. Eating the best thing last. Eating. <laughs> and, e and eating, and you know, at a certain time. Eating even when you're not hungry. Okay. Or taking a bite of everything in turn. Taking a bite of everything in turn. Mm. Isn't it great to hear everybody else's? This is like, wow, never thought of that. How about making sure I notice that I always finish what's on my plate? I don't have the thought, make sure you finish what's on your plate, but I do. Train by. Hmm? You're trained well. Well, trained well. Right. Repetition. I mean, isn't that habit is repetition. Um, so, okay. So physical. How about emotional? Emotional habits. Okay. Is anybody an incessant worrier? They tend to look at the concerns or the worries or the what might be the things I need to worry about or think about or be concerned with. Okay. Maybe not anybody here. Um, oh, okay. Ted, shh, don't tell anybody. Tendency to judge. <laughs> Others, self, okay. Um, tendency to look toward the critical first rather than the praise. Okay. So I get home and the first thing I see is the bicycle that's outside in front of the door, the door that's left open, the milk that got left on the counter, and it's like those are the first things that I see when I get home. And the teenagers are like, did you not take the dog out? And I notice that habit is to see what's out first rather than what might have gone well that day first. So that's a habit for me that I'm working on getting rid of and surrendering. <laughs> it's not a bad habit, it's just one I choose not to have anymore. <laughs> um, 
Any other emotional? How about psychological ones? Well, I mean, those are really, they, they often get combined. So in other words, the thought of, for example, judging myself of I didn't do that well enough, I got back from work, I didn't handle that situation well, I could have done better on that phone call, I definitely didn't prepare well enough for that lecture I was going to give, I should have done that, I, right? So those tendencies and then those thoughts can often lead to feelings, can't they? God, I always do that. Why don't I ever learn? Every time I do, I can't believe I do that. Now I'm starting to get all angry at myself. I start noticing that I start feeling my blood pressure raise a little bit because now that that judgment is leading to a little bit of frustration, which is leading to a little bit of anger, which then leads to disappointment. Why don't I learn? Why don't I ever learn that I should start two weeks in advance? Anybody do things like this or is it just me? Okay, I just want to make sure. All right. Using always and never. Using Times always or never. Graph. Especially in your languaging. You always do it that way. I always, every time, do it. Is that really true? No, but we often tend to catastrophize or make it larger than it often is. Now, what's the difference between a habit and an addiction? Ooh, we don't like that word. Okay. It seems to me with addiction, you know you're doing it, but you just don't stop. That's me with Okay, food. okay. So that that's one it's possibility. Conscious, but... Okay, so number one, there's a fine line, and there's not really a clear, this is a habit and this is an addiction. Maybe I have a habit of having a cup of coffee every morning. It's not an addiction, it's just a habit. <laughs> but if it involves alcohol, it's an addiction. Hmm. What if I tend to have a pen in my mouth all the time? That's a habit, but if it's a cigarette, it's an addiction. Okay. So, the definition of addiction Dancing to cell phones. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. Addiction. Different definitions, but helpful to point to what we're talking about. A compulsive physiological need for and the use of a habit habit forming substance, like nicotine, alcohol, or others we we'll talk about, characterized by tolerance, in other words, you get used to it and you adapt to it and you habituate to it by well-defined physiological symptoms upon withdrawal as well. So in other words, you take it away, and it's not easy. Okay? Another one is a persistent or compulsive use of a substance known by the user to be physically or psychologically or socially harmful. And another one is a primary chronic disease. Again, these are just people's definitions, right? Mm -hmm. What point is it a disease? At what point is it a habit? At what point is it just a problem? Chronic disease of brain reward, motivation, memory, related circuitry, characterized by an impairment in behavioral control. I can't say no to it. Craving, inability to abstain, and diminished relationships. Ooh, don't like the last one. Don't like that. Now, habits underlie addictions. Right? So in other words, addictions are based upon habits. Now, what happens is there becomes a physiological, neurochemical, hormonal, neurotransmitter type changes that happen from habits as well as addictions. When we take away, for example, with nicotine, if we take, you know, nicotine has receptors on the cells and we very much know about the chemical addiction, for example, of nicotine, but what happens after 100 days when the nicotine is no longer in your blood supply? You think people still have a craving for cigarettes even when the chemical's not there anymore? You betcha. So what's doing it? The nicotine's not in the system causing that addictive relationship anymore. Often it's the habit. It's the reward that we get. And we'll talk more about the reward system. So in other words, our environment, our external environment that reminds us of the habits and patterns and people and stresses and things, etc., that remind us of that are the underlying habits that can continue an addiction. Very important. So I'm going to use some different models, as I talked about, based on some of these different authors, and um, that's going to help me bring in some different ideas. So one of the ones that I want to begin with is from Charles Duhigg's book, and it's this. Q, to routine, to reward. Q, routine, reward. 